All right, we'll go, get, go ahead and get started. And I don't know who's more nervous, me or my song leader, but uh, we was arguing about who was going to lead the song, and I finally got him up here. But I want to say I appreciate you being here tonight. appreciate everybody coming out, supporting the meeting. And um, we hope this will be an annual meeting. We hope tonight will be a start of something that, that we can continue year-round. And so we hope that it will be a blessing to you tonight and a blessing and, and, and an encouragement to the youth tonight. And, um, and uh, maybe the Lord will top it off with somebody being saved, being born again into the family of God. But if you got a cell phone, I'll ask you tonight if you'll make sure to turn those off or put them on silent and uh, so those don't go off during the service. But everybody can and will stand and turn your hymn book to hymn number 277. 277. <clears throat> say once again I do appreciate you being here tonight appreciate everybody coming out all the churches that's made an effort to be here tonight to back this meeting and to help us and and what a blessing it is our church has been praying about it for a while and we've been excited about it and I'm even more excited tonight that we have the number that we have but anyway I know we'll have uh, brother uh, Avery Johns will be preaching for us tonight and then brother Zach Scott will be preaching for us and also we have the Morrison sisters that will be singing and also Philadelphia Baptist Church, their youth choirs came down to be with us tonight, and we appreciate them. And I want to pray for the preachers tonight. God will help them and touch them. That's the most important thing. I know song service will get our hearts where we need to be, and uh, 
uh, get our hearts in the, the place to worship. And uh, But the preaching of the word of God is where we're going to get hell. Yes. God said he chose to the foolishness to preach and to save them that would believe. Right. And so what a joy that would be tonight. God would speak to somebody's heart here that's lost. Bring them to a place that they can repent and get right, get right with him. Be born again. Born into the family of God. And uh, we certainly want to be... Uh, Certainly want to encourage the youth tonight. I, you know, I, I raised my kids. They're all grown now. My daughter just got married a few weeks ago, and, and uh, I raised my kids in camp meetings and, and youth meetings, and, and it was always a blessing. Amen. That's where they'll meet their, you know, you hope, you know, they'll meet their, their husband or their wife there, and, and, but it's always been an encouragement, and it was to our kids. They always look forward to it, and so we're looking forward tonight to see what God will do and that God will bless and meet with us here tonight. All right. This time I'm going to turn it over to uh, Brother Kevin Thomas and the Youth Choir, Philadelphia Baptist Church.
You know, that song right there, I remember the day. It's, I do remember the day, September the 29th of 1990. You know, I've been thinking a lot about it for the last week. Brother Stanley Blue was actually preaching when I got saved. And, and I was a member at Caneland Baptist. I, was, I went to Caneland Baptist Church. And Brother, Brother Jones was a pastor. I know he's in here somewhere. I don't know where he's at. He's sitting somewhere he's in here. I see him come in. There he is. But he was a pastor of the church. And I remember when I got saved, the Brother Stanley preaching. I just feel like saying that this morning. I, you, there's a day that you know. Oh, yes. You may not know the date. That don't scare the devil. It may not know the actual day. They ain't going to scare the devil. But you better know that place. If you'll stand, we're going to sing one more congregation all together. We're going to sing 181, Blessed Assurance. Thank God we do have that blessed assurance. And if you don't have it, you can get it. 181, Blessed Assurance.
Just remain standing if you don't care. I'm glad tonight that we can have that assurance. Yes. I'm glad I got a no-so salvation. Amen. I'm glad that we can have a no-so. We don't have to have a hope-so, but we can know beyond a shadow yes. of a doubt that we've been born into the family of God. Amen. First John 5, 13, he says, These things have I written unto you that yes. you may know. Yes. And so God tells us in the, in the word of God that we can know that we've been saved by the grace of God. We can yes. know that we've been born again, birthed into yes. the family of God. And I know tonight beyond a shadow of a doubt that I belong to him. And I hope that you do too tonight. All right, I want you to remain standing as Brother Avery comes tonight. I don't want you to pray for him, that God will help him and bless him. And you encourage him, get behind him and help him to preach. And uh, what a blessing it is to have a young man. Well, you're 19 years old. And 17, 17 years old, younger than what I thought. But he came and preached for us a few Sundays ago, and, and the Lord laid him on my heart for this meeting. And he's certainly been a blessing to me. And Amen. what short time I've got to know him and talk to him and fellowship with him. And so you pray for him. And, God will help him tonight. Take your time, brother. Before I preach tonight, I'm going to do a little something here. Brother Randy, I'd ask you and Brother Wesley to help me out with this. Y'all can chain up that crazy man in between you right there. <laughs> one of you chain his feet, one of you chain his hands. <laughs> Read a few verses here out of Jeremiah chapter number 40 and bring you what the Lord's laid on our hearts for tonight. To give you a little bit of a background here out of Jeremiah chapter 40 and chapter 39, in verse number 15, it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. While he was shut up in the court of the prison. Yeah. You see Jeremiah here, he, is, he's, he has been chained up. He has been put in prison. But then we see here in chapter number 40, the first four verses is what I like to read. The Bible says in verse number 1, it says, The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after that, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had let him go from Ram. When he had taken him, being bound in chains, among all that were carried away captive of Jerusalem and Judea, which were carried away captive unto Babylon. And the captain of the guard took Jer Jeremiah and said unto him, The Lord thy God hath pronounced this evil upon this place. Now the Lord hath brought it and done according as he hath said, because ye have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed his voice. Therefore, this thing is come upon you. Verse number four. And now behold, I loose thee this day from the chains which were upon thine hand. Uh, yeah. If it seem good unto thee to come with me into Babylon, come, and I will look well unto thee. But if it seem ill unto thee to come with me into Babylon, forbear. Behold, all the land is before thee, whether it seemeth good and convenient for thee to go, thither go. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you again for the blessings of another day. God, I want to thank you again for the health and strength just to even get out of the bed this morning. God, as undeserving as we are, God, as we stand behind this pulpit tonight, God, I pray for that old-time unction that the old-timers had, God. I pray that you would help us tonight, God. I pray that you would hide us behind the cross. I pray that you would put a fire in our bones like the prophet Jeremiah. God, I pray that you would help us tonight and hide us behind the cross. God, I pray that you'd help us to say what you'd have us to say and nothing that you'd have us not to say. God, I pray that you'd help us to do what you'd have us to do and be what you'd have us to be in this service. God, I pray for the lost that may be in our midst. God, I pray that today would be the wonderful day to see some lost soul get saved, get birthed in the family of God. And Lord, we'll thank you for all that you do because it's all we do. It's in your name we humbly do pray. Yes. Amen. You can be seated. As I've already said in Jeremiah 39, we see that a lot of people have been taken captive here, including Jeremiah himself. But then we see in uh, chapter 39 and verse number 18, the Bible says this, For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword, but thy life shall be for a prey. You see that word prey here in verse number 18? It, that word means to take advantage of. 
Something that's to take advantage of. You see, the king here, he had taken Jeremiah captive. Jeremiah was in bondage. But no doubt many people in the world that we live in today are bound by sin. They're bound by fear. They're bound by chains. Let me tell you, there's a lot of people in this world that are chained up like a big dog. Most people don't ever chain up their dogs till they get out of the pen every once in a while. You know, when Satan really realizes that we're, we're something to worry about, we're something to worry about getting, into, getting in tune with God, you see, he's going to put those chains on our life if we'll, if we'll be willing. Let me tell you this afternoon, Satan's going to put on them chains. He's going to put them as tight as he can. He's going to bind you off and throw you off into hell with everything he's got. He's going to bind you up. He's going to keep you away from the things of God if you'll just let him. The Bible says in Lamentation 3, 7, it says, He hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. He hath made my chain heavy. You see, the chains that Satan binds around our lives, they're heavy chains. They're not just any kind of light chains. They're heavy chains. Yeah. In Jeremiah 4 and 7, the Bible says that the lion has come up from his thicket. Brother Randy, in the day that we live in, the devil is the lion. And he's seeking out whom he may devour. The lion has come up from his thicket in the day that we live in today. Let me tell you, the lion is out to get us. He's out to devour us like prey. He's preying upon our lives. He's preying upon our family's lives. He's preying on our church's lives. He's preying on our school's lives. He's praying on everybody's lives that are all around us. Let me tell you this afternoon, the devil is out to get you. The lion has come up from his thicket the day that we live in today. The lion is up to get you in any way that he can. Whatever he may send your way. He may send somebody your way to get you out in the things of the world. Let me tell you this afternoon, the lion has come up from his thicket this afternoon. And let me tell you this afternoon, he's going to chain you up with everything he's got. But I want to preach for a few minutes tonight. I'm no longer chained. Yeah. I'm no longer chained. That's something some of us Christians ought to take a few laps around the building tonight. I'm no longer chained by sin, Brother Zach. I'm no longer chained by fear. I'm no longer chained by sin. That's it. Amen. First of all, I want to look at Satan's binding power. Satan's binding power. In verse number one, it says, The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after that Nebuzaradan, the captain front captain of the guard, had let him go from Rom when he had taken him, being bound in chains among all that were carried away captive. You see, when Satan bound us in chains, we were carried away captive. We were in Satan's bondage. But I'm thankful for a day on a February Wednesday night, Brother Randy, when I knelt on the left side of my yeah. bed, Brother Andrew, oh, yeah. I'm thankful that all of heaven came down in my room one night and saved me by the good grace of God. My chains and fetters fell off, and I ain't never been the same since. There was a change that came into my life, Brother Andrew, Brother Al. There was something that was different when I got up off my knees. Let me tell you, there may have been a puddle of tears. It didn't matter how much I cried. It didn't matter if I turned red in the face. It didn't matter of any of that. What matters was God. God came in and broke the chains. God came in and broke the chains. It wasn't my daddy. It wasn't my mama. It wasn't my granddaddy. It was my heavenly father came in and broke the chains in my room that day. The Bible says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The first chains I see is the chains of fear. The chains of fear. These are the, these are the chains that he binds on the Christian's life. Let me tell you something. Fear is a liar. Fear is a liar. You see, the devil has always been and always will be a liar. Brother Andrew, there's been times in my life that the devil has come up to me and say, you ain't worth nothing. You ain't no good. You might as well just end it all right now. But let me tell you, the old good comforter, the Holy Spirit came on and he came on in and he told me it was everything's going to be all right. He comforted me when I needed a comforter. Let me tell you, the Holy Spirit's always there when we need him. The first thing I see is the chains of fear that grace can't change you. That's a lie of the devil. That's out of the pits of hell that grace can't change you. The Bible says in Romans 5.20, it says, Moreover the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. You see, I had lived in sin. I had sowed a few wild oats before I got saved. But let me tell you, when God broke the chains, grace changed me. And when you got saved, grace changed you. There ain't a person that's too bad that grace can't change. Grace can save the worst of the worst, the best of the best, the richest of the poor. Let me tell you, grace can change anybody that'll come to God. Grace. Grace. Wonderful grace. 
The Bible also says in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, it says, And he said unto me, My grace, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. You know, Brother Andrew, I ain't got much strength. I ain't got much strength in myself, Brother Zach. But let me tell you, when God gets a hold of me, when God gives me strength, that's the only way that I can keep going. That is the only way that I can keep going on my everyday life. That's the only way that I can get up in the mornings. That's the only way that I can open my eyes up in the mornings. That's the only reason there's blood pumping through my veins right now. It's because God's grace, God's mercy, and His love toward me. But His grace is sufficient. There's nobody that His grace can't change. There's no situation that His grace can't fix. And then I see the second lie, the second chain of fear, is that salvation can be lost. Yeah. Romans 6.10 says, For in that He died, He died unto sin once, but in that He liveth, he liveth unto God. Brother Andrew, it didn't take Jesus 20 times to die on the cross. It took one time. It took one blood. It took one salvation. And that's all it took. That's all it's ever going to take. My, my, There was blood applied to my heart. There was blood applied to your heart. And let me tell you, my name's gonna, not going to get blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. My name is forever settled in the Lamb's Book of Life because I know my name is there. My name is there. And it's never going to be whited out. It's not going to be scribbled out. It's not going to be wrote now. It's going to be washed out. Avery John's his name is there. Amen. And I hope you know your name is there. But let me tell you, your salvation can't be lost. God died to sin. Jesus died to sin once. That's all it took. That's all it took. And then I see that no one cares for you. Satan's going to come about and he's going to say, well, ain't nobody that cares for you anymore. Brother Andrew, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. First Peter 1 and 5 or 5, 7 says, Casting all, a double all, all your care upon him, for he careth for you. You see, Satan's out to devour you and me. He's out to devour everything that God has given us. But let me tell you, no one ever cared for me like Jesus, Brother Wesley. There was a great God in heaven. He's seated upon the right hand of the throne of God this afternoon. He is up in the third heaven this afternoon. And let me tell you, my God specializes in the rough cases. When you think nobody's there, He specializes in the impossible cases. You may came in here with an impossible situation in your life, impossible marriage, impossible finances, whatever the case may be be, but my God specializes in those hard cases. Let me tell you, there's no one ever cared for you like Jesus, and there's no one that's ever going to care for you except Jesus himself. The devil's going to come up to you and he's going to say, why don't you just end it all? Why don't you just end it all? Why don't you just commit suicide? Why don't you just end your life? Why don't you just do this and that? Well, let me tell you, it's not over till God says it's over. When God wants to call you home, he'll call you home. Not only the chains of fear, but I see the chains of sin. Oh, yes. These are the heaviest chains that Satan can bind anybody. Mm. In Mark chapter number 5, we see the maniac of Gadara, Legion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> First of all, I see the weight of his sin. This man was a man of unclean spirit. Yeah. Sat in the tombs, naked, cutting himself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Brother Andrew, that's some heavy weight on his life. That's some heavy weight to deal with. <coughs> but let me tell you, when Jesus showed up, those weights got a little lighter. Because let me tell you, when Jesus showed up, that weight was gone, Brother Andrew. The weight was gone. Not only the weight that he had, but the worry that he had. The worry that he had, well, nobody likes me. Nobody wants to be around me. Nobody wants to do this. Nobody wants to do that with me. He had a worry. But this is the one that I really want to hit on. The chains of sin. Not only his weight and his worry, but his wishing. Brother Andrew, the alcoholic wishes he would have never took that first drink. The dope addict wishes he would have never took that first, that first smoke, that first shot. 
Let me tell you, anybody that's ever been out in sin, they regret the first time that they ever stooped down in sin, Brother Andrew. It only took one fall, and they're wishing that they could get back to where they was. But let me tell you, it's a lot harder to get back up once you're down there. Once you're down in the hog's pen, it's hard to get back up. But let me tell you, you need to protect yourself. You need to protect yourself from the chains of sin, and you'll never get to fall, and you'll never wish that you hadn't done it. The Bible says in that same chapter, Mark chapter 5, verse number 15, it says that he was clothed and in his right mind. And they Amen. was afraid. Yeah. Brother Andrew, when Jesus passed by, Something drastic and impossible had happened. This man had been cleansed of anything that he had ever done. Grace had reached down further than his deepest sin and got him up. Let me tell you this afternoon, he didn't have to worry any longer. He didn't have any weight any longer. He didn't have to wish any longer because Jesus passed by. And when Jesus passed by, something greater happened down on the inside. Something happened on the inside and the people were afraid. The people were afraid because they knew not what had happened. Not only Satan's binding power, but God's breaking power. God's breaking power. Brother Randy, if you want to unlock our wild man over here. There's one key on both locks. But I'm thankful that Satan may can bind me. But God, glory to God, he can break my chains. Amen. No, no, there ain't no way to express it in the world other than God can break my chains. Let me tell you, them chains fell off. That man can go free. Let me tell you, he can get up. He can walk around. He can go about his own life. He can go about not having to worry about the chains of sin or fear anymore. He can walk out as a free man. Let me tell you, that's what Jeremiah did. The Bible says in verse number four, it says, Now behold, I'll loose thee this day from these chains. I'm glad one day that God came into my life and he said, I'll loose thee this day from your chains no more chains I'm not bound by sin any longer sin sin didn't have nothing on me anymore brother Andrew God broke the chains and he gave me a lively hope 1 Peter 1 3 said blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He gave us a lively hope for our failures. Brother Andrew, I'm not going to ever reach sinless perfection. I'm not ever going to reach perfection. Let me tell you, there's hope for my failures. When I fall short, when I fall short and fall by the wayside, God's right there, right on time every time, giving me hope for the journey. He's saying, press on. It won't be very long as the old song says. Just press on a little bit longer. You see, when Elijah was sitting under the juniper tree, he was, out, he was down and out and discouraged all about the prophets that were getting killed around him. But let me tell you, the angel of the Lord came to him and said, get up because the journey's too great for thee. Let me tell you, Brother Andrew on my own, the journey's too great for me. Brother Randy, the journey's too great for you. Let me tell you, I need God to help me. I need God to help me. I need God to help me. I need God helping me on the inside. Not only hope for our failures, but there's hope for the fallen. People that fall by the wayside. But not only the hope for the fallen, hope for the failures, but there's hope for the future. Glory to God. There's hope for the future. Brother Andrew, this country, this world may be coming to an end very soon. The Lord may split the eastern sky before we get even out of this building. But let me tell you, it'd be all right if he did come back while we're in the church house. But let me tell you, there's not only hope for that, the second coming of the Lord, but there's hope for our country, there's hope for our family, there's hope for our church, there's hope all around us if we'll just let God have his way. There's hope for the future. Let me tell you this. There's no politician in the world that can get this country back on track. There's no politician that can get this country where it needs to be. But let me tell you, let me tell you one that can. And his name is Jesus. Jesus the God Almighty. He can get this country back on track. He can get your church back on track. He can get our families back on track. If we'll just let him. Not only he gave us a lively hope, but he gave us a lasting freedom. One of the most familiar verses in the Bible, John 3.16. Most of us in this building could quote this verse. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son Amen. That's right. that whosoever 
whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I've been given a freedom that I can't repay. Not only a freedom, but I've been given freedom from the power of sin. The Bible says in Romans 8, 37 through 39, it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He gave us that freedom from the power of sin. Sin can't bind me any longer. He can't bind me any longer. Not only from the power of sin, but from the penalty of sin. Luke 16, one of the most familiar pictures of hell. The rich man and Lazarus here. The rich man died and was buried. And in hell, lifted up his eyes, being in torment. For I'm tormented in this flame. Amen. Let me tell you, the day that God broke my chains, Mm -hmm. He gave me a freedom from the penalty of sin. Mm -hmm. That penalty was hell. My own doom. Brother Andrew, I couldn't have done it on my own. I couldn't have saved myself. My daddy couldn't have saved me. My grandfather couldn't have saved me, Brother Andrew. But when God came down into that room that night, He rescued me from hell. Let me tell you, He gave me a clear picture of hell that night. I was scared to death. Let me tell you, He scared me to death. I was scared. When God came down on the inside, there was a comforter that came in and said, there is no penalty of sin for you. There's just perfection waiting on me, Andrew. Amen. That's heaven. Not only from the power of sin and the penalty of sin, but from the presence of sin. Whew. I don't, I don't, Brother Andrew, I don't know what a world's like without sin. Brother Andy, I don't know what a world's like without the presence of sin. But let me tell you, I could tell you about a day. <laughs> Woo! When God's going to split the eastern sky, whether I go by the grave, whether I go by the rapture, I'm going to go to heaven by, by the grace of God. Let me tell you this afternoon, there's going to be no sin, no more heartache, no more heartbreak, no more weeping, no more anything, no more sin. I want to flip over to Revelation chapter number 20 and read a few verses and then I'm done. Revelations in chapter number 20. Revelation chapter number 20, verse number 1 says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. Verse number 2, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed, For a little season. Look down in verse number 9 and 10. It says, And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. And the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Listen to verse number 10. This is a glorious thing. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Brother Andrew, there's coming a day where there ain't going to be no more sin. There ain't going to be no more sin's bondage. There ain't going to be no more sin. There ain't going to be no more Satan. There ain't going to be no devil. Ain't going to be no more lying. Ain't going to be nobody out to devour me because he's going to be in hell where he belongs. He's going to be in his own place where everybody that belongs. Hell was not made for us. Hell was not made for us. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. But people are falling by the wayside, Brother Andrew. Every day, falling off into hell. The Bible says it's a broad way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that find it. The Bible talks about heaven. It says... For narrow is the way. Few there be that find it. Too many people are falling off into hell, Brother Andrew. All because they think that religion is going to get them there. They think that money is going to get them there. They think that a lot of things is going to get them there. But all they need is Jesus. 
Amen. You see, Brother Andrew, I've done a recent study on the, on the word religion. The word religion comes from a Latin word, religar, which means to bind. Mm -hmm. All religion will do for you is bind you up and throw you off into hell. There ain't nothing that no religion can do for you. There ain't no nothing that money can do for you. God can do things for you. Amen. God is the only way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Not by me, Brother Andrew. Not by you, Brother Randy. By him. Yes. By Jesus. Amen. I'm thankful that I'm no longer chained. Amen. If you are chained by sin this evening, I urge you, I urge you to make a place at this altar tonight and do business with God. Because you, you don't want to be bound off, thrown off into hell. Let me tell you, God loves you tonight. God don't want you to go to hell. But that's the penalty of sin. And He'll do what He has to do if your name's not found in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Well, I appreciate the message, don't you? Yes. I'm glad I got hope. I'm glad I've been set free. Yes. April 22nd, 2001, Beaverdale Baptist Church, one Sunday morning, wasn't raised in church, didn't know anything about the things of God. Yeah. God put a desire in my heart that Sunday to go. Actually, that Saturday, that Sunday morning, I went there where me and my wife was married at. Some years, uh, some years earlier, when I was about 19, was when we got married there. And that Sunday morning, God saved me, yeah. set me Man. free. And I'm glad I'm no longer in the bondage of sin. Amen. I've been set free. I'm a slave to righteousness. That's my heart desire. I long to be perfect, don't you? And I think anybody that's been saved by the grace of God, that's your heart. That's your desire. You long for perfection. And I think you'll be found seeking for it until that day that he comes and takes us out of this world and uh, gives us that glorified body. We no longer have to worry about sin. I'll ask the Morrison sisters if they'll go ahead and come tonight and sing. You pray for them. God bless them and Bless our hearts as they sing.